Well, good afternoon and welcome to the latest instalment of the Vincent's webinar series. Today we're going to be talking about T-bar reporting. So we're not talking about Toowoomba, we're actually talking about the new transfer balance account reporting requirements um, that are uh, coming rather quickly for SMSF uh, advisors basically. So today is more about the accountants and the advisors who are helping their clients with these T-bar reports. And I'll, I'll, I will say T-bar reports, I do appreciate that it's like saying ATM machine, but you'll have to forgive me that one. Um, so yeah, so this is more, this isn't designed to help educate you around what a T-bar is, or that being said, I will be talking a bit about it. It's more about asking you as a practitioner, some questions that you need to think about basically before you start to um, go headlong into this space. So let's move along. So firstly, uh, my contact details are uh, on the uh, webinar, so right there. Um, so if you have any questions, by all means, drop me a line and um, I'll help you as best as I can. Just remember, we are talking about superannuation. So it is a financial product, even though I'm not talking about investment type stuff today. So while you can believe everything I say, you can't actually believe it unless you um, specifically talk to me about it. Now, why do we have these things called T-bars? So as I said, the total, um, the, the total balance uh, account reporting requirements. Now, basically, we have the T-bar reporting framework because of the changes that were made to the budget back in 2016 in relation to superannuation. So we have this thing called the transfer balance cap and the transfer balance account. Now, because we have these um, guidelines or the, 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 these caps that we can have inside a retirement phase, we need there needs to be a mechanism, there needs to be a way in which we can tell the government how these things work. So for those of you who are old enough um, or have been playing with super for long enough, you might remember um, before 2007, we had these things called reasonable benefit limits or RBLs. So back then, <clears throat> we had to report to the ATO when people were starting pension or when members were starting pensions um, even taking lump sums, all that sort of stuff. This is really history repeating itself. Uh, it's basically exactly the same. Where when some the difference is that was on a monthly basis and it was a lot more clear cut. This reporting requirement's a bit more ambiguous, um, as we'll talk about as we sort of go through. So this is really a way in which the government can track where individuals are at as far as their transfer balance cap. So if they if their cap is getting too large or if they're getting their account is getting too close to their cap, there needs to be a way that the government can step in or at least be notified that that's the case. Or if they go over, then they can issue them a breach notice and, and bring that back down. So the T-bar is purely a reporting mechanism because of the transfer balance account and transfer balance cap. <clears throat> so T-Bar has been developed to capture the information that super funds and some um, uh, insurance companies need to report to the ATO. So for all super funds paying a pension, so a retirement phase product, to an individual Need, they need to be, T-bar needs to be completed. So for every single one. And that can happen essentially a couple of different ways. So via the um, business portal or the tax agent portal, depending on who's lodging it, uh, or via paper. So paper's been out for a while now and the ATO actually have some good webinars about how to fill out the T-bar the forms and all this sort of thing. For me, we pay good money for our software developers uh, or software product to do this sort of thing. So we use class, they've released their um, T-bar reporting. So we're essentially making sure that the numbers are right 
And what we have to report is right, but they can class as essentially getting that reporting obligation correct. So with class, <clears throat> and I believe BGL is the same, and certainly Supermate is, it actually gives you one file that you then upload to the tax agent portal. So it doesn't happen via uh, SBA or PLS um, as um, a normal tax return or activity statement does at this stage. I believe that may be coming, but it was easier for the tax office to facilitate this data transfer uh, via the tax agent portal initially. So uh, yeah, so what it really means is you've got a, a data extraction file that you grab and then it gets uploaded onto the, um, the tax agent portal. <clears throat> I'll talk about something else to think about a little bit later on in relation to that. So the, the purposes behind T-Bar is basically, it, it's reporting information for a member's total superannuation balance. So how much do they have in their accounts and reporting transfer balance cap events. So they can be different and they can also be the same thing. So an events is a really important, I suppose, notion to think about because you only need to report your T-bar when an event occurs. So what type of events? Well, basically pre-existing pensions. So if there was a pension that was running prior to 30 June 2017, and continues to be paid or continues after 1 July 17, then that has to be reported. Any new events that occur, so new pensions that start after 1 July 2017, they have to be reported. Uh, commutations, so where someone takes their retirement, uh, their retirement account, retirement phase account back to accumulation, that has to be reported because remember that's a debit off your off your um, balance. Certain LRBA arrangements, so reasonable benefit limits, so where you have related parties that are involved or where you have pensioners that actually have an LRBA, they come into this as well when certain events occur. Um, personal injury, injury contributions, so a structured settlement payment where the court says that, you know, Joe Bloggs gets a million dollars because of some pain and suffering that they've um, earned, that can go into super, no caps, that's all good. Remember, they're all excluded from these new $1.6 million thresholds. So they actually get reported when the contribution is made or shortly thereafter via, the, via a T-bar as well. And also when the ATO comes to help. So basically, if the ATO issues what's called a Commissioner's Commutation Authority, so that's where the ATO says that, hey, you've got too much, you've got to roll some of this back, you've got to report that as well. Even though the tax office know about it, in theory, you, you still have to report the fact that that has happened. <clears throat> so with a little bit of that context, what I really want to do now is get you thinking about how you're going to manage this process. Because like I said, this is meant for you know, practitioners or those people that are actually helping clients with their T-bar. So remembering now that we've got um, a lot of reports that are going to have to be lodged. You know, we look after about 520 funds and we've probably got about 270 pensions that are being paid or at least T-bar reports that we have to lodge because of a 1 July, two, uh, one, the precondition, the 1 July 2017 or before. So you really need to think about who's going to be lodging it and then um, essentially communicate that with any other third parties that you deal with. So for a little bit of a, um, something a little bit different, let's, I want you to think about who's actually going to be doing the T-bar reporting for your SMSF clients. So I've got a bit of a poll running, so hopefully uh, you'll see that appearing now. But basically, um, think about who's gonna be responsible. So will you be responsible, responsible for doing the T-bar via your normal client engagement process? 
Will the client do it themselves? Remember, they can with this, either via the business portal or the tax agent portal. Also, um, will it be a shared responsibility? So will the client do it? Will you do it? Uh, will a third party do it? So a financial advisor that, um, that might be in there. And haven't you really, or the, the fifth option amongst all that is, have you not really thought about it yet? So hopefully you can see those polls, those questions there. Um, and so I'll just give you a few minutes to, well, 30 seconds, to give some thought around how you're actually going to be looking to do this um, and who you think will be responsible amongst your client base as far as actually preparing these T-bar reports. <clears throat> so, and this is really important because it's not necessarily clear cut or straightforward like preparing a set of financial statements. So 10 more seconds, I'll play some thinking music, but you know, I'm not very good at that stuff. Don't be shy, get in there. All right, well, we might end that one there. So that's actually quite interesting because of the um, those that are listening to this live, there's 15% that actually aren't too sure who'll be doing it. And basically about the same number who said it'll be a shared responsibility between the client and yourself. So those that haven't really given it a lot of thought as to who's going to be doing it, as I mentioned, the end of this, well, sorry, I haven't mentioned that yet, but I'm about to. <clears throat> At the end of this month, you've got to have some very, well, you've got some decisions to make, some thinking to do around it. And the reason why I say that is this, there are time frames, specific time frames around that reporting requirement. So for APRA funds, so the big APRA funds, they have to report um, their T bar, they have to lodge their T bars 10 days following the end of month. So they actually have a monthly requirement to lodge T bars. Self managed super funds are a little bit different. And unfortunately, it is not so straightforward. So for self managed super funds, the timing around that lodgement, well, basically, it depends. So and what it depends on is essentially the balance of the membership inside the fund. And it's the total superannuation balance, not the balance that's inside the self-managed fund, but their total balance. And that's a really, really, really important thing. And it makes this whole process really convoluted, really convoluted. So if you have a, a pre-existing um, pension in place, that continues after 1 July 17, those T-bar reports have to be lodged on or before 1 July 2018. So for that 15% that said they weren't sure who's actually gonna be doing the reporting, you really need to think about your processes in the next 25 days to get that right or to get that happening. Um, and you know it's a busy time of year, we all get that. Um, but you really have to turn your mind to this and quite quickly. <clears throat> um, to put in a little bit of context, we've actually been planning and doing a lot of um, resourcing around this since October last year, because we want to make sure that we get this right uh, as best we can. So, you know, it's time to really think about what you're going to do. Um, if a member um, starts a sorry, if there's a commutation uh, because of a notice from the commissioner, so an excess transfer balance notice, then it's 10 days after the month, exactly like an APRA fund. If you have a, a commutation authority that you've received from the ATO, you've got 60 days from the, uh, the date the ATO issues that authority to act on it and lodge your T-bar. So it's a two months to basically do something and then lodge it. For everything else, and let's face it, if as self-managed super fund practitioners, if we're doing our job as best we can, and in theory, we shouldn't have any of those middle two, everything else is gonna fall down here. So 
what that means is that if all of your members inside the self-managed super fund have a total superannuation balance of less than $1 million, then the T-bar report is due when you lodge the annual tax return. All right, so typically 15 May the following year. So let's. So if there was an event that occurred today, you wouldn't actually have to report that until 15 May 2019. So essentially it coincides with the preparation and lodgement of the tax return for the super fund. All right, that's, that's fantastic. Otherwise, <clears throat> it actually happens the later of the 28th of October, 2018. So in other words, for any events that occur between 1 July and 30 June this financial year, they have to be reported by 28 October, 2018, if a member has a balance greater than a million dollars, sorry, a total superannuation balance greater than a million dollars. That has to be reported by 28 October. So if they're starting, if they've started a pension this year, you basically have to have the fund finished, potentially, by 30 September. So hence why I said that we started this process some time ago, thinking about how we're actually going to deliver this up for clients. It's not so much about the reporting obligation for the pre-existing ones, it's this going forward thing. So the latter of 28 October 18, or 28 days after the end of the quarter in which an event occurs. So just like a bass. And that's why I actually liken this to GST for super funds. So there's an event that occurs, a GST transaction, you have an obligation to then prepare and lodge a report 28 days after the end of the month. So now think about what that may mean for your business as far as that timing goes. How are you actually going to know which ones your which which T bar reports you're going to you're going to be doing? So another poll question for you. Something else for you to think about. I'm giving you a little bit of work on this um, on this presentation or this webinar. So do you so knowing about that requirement to lodge your returns or the, these T bar returns? When uh, how are you going to identify them? How are you going to know which ones need to be reported and when? Are you going to segment your client base so anyone below 800,000 to say anyone above a million dollars, are you going to then come up with a way to identify them? So are you going to segregate based on the member balance? Are you going to worry about, are you going to segregate it based on the member account type? So are they accumulation, pension or trues? Because <clears throat> remembering, and I probably didn't emphasise this point enough, but a TRIS, a transition to retirement income stream, is not actually something you report on your T-bar. Uh, it's not a retirement phase product. So it's only account-based pensions, market link pensions, complying pensions, plus any of those other variants thereof that actually get reported as part of this process. So will you not be doing segmenting because you're just going to let the client tell you, oh, by the way, I've started a pension or a, a financial advisor might tell you, oh, look, I've told this client to start a pension. So that'll be your trigger and you'll just report it exactly when that happens. Will you be doing it everyone on a quarterly basis? So can't blanche, can't blanch, don't care what happens, just doing it. Or obviously you're not sure yet. So the polls there, you know, once again, throw some, um, Put your thoughts down because um, then we can sort of talk about what that looks like. So think of this scenario while, you, while you're pondering um, how you think you're going to approach this. Let's say you've got a client that wants to start a pension 1 July, uh, sorry, 1 June 2018. All right. So they're three days ago or four days ago, they said, right, I've started a pension. There's no requirement to take a minimum pension. So they might not necessarily be able to pick up a dollar amount to then pull that out or to for you to flag and say hey what's this um and then you've got to if assuming they've got over a million dollars you've then got to go through basically process the full year's worth of fund so you can then report the t-bar 
because you've got to get your components and you know do it all properly. Uh, what about the situation uh, where um, you've got um, an advisor who says, "Hey, I'm starting a pension on this client. Let's get it rolling." How are you going to handle that situation? Um, have, have you spoken to your clients about being engaged in this process as well? So that way they can help you with this. Um, have you looked for your clients' other superannuation balances to know if they're above a million dollars or not? Now, I've got a, a number of clients where they receive a CSS pension. So the, a com um, the Commonwealth um, Superannuation Scheme pension. That all becomes part of it. I've got a fund that has a $100,000 balance inside their self-managed fund. But by the time that you work out the special value for their CSS pension, they actually come to 1.4 million. So you then need to think about different rules or different ways for these clients. Now, if you're the tax agent for the individual, you can actually go to the tax office via the tax agent portal and ask, upload a file and say, can I have all of my total superannuation balances, please. And they'll tell you. Uh, it'll take some time, but they'll tell you. And by the way, the tax office do all of that manually. So you can imagine how they, much they loved us when we asked for all of our clients. <clears throat> and I just didn't get my super fund clients. I'll get an entire tax practice. Um, then there's also, um, so you've got those type of pensions. But if you're not the, if you're not the tax agent, then you can't actually get that information yet. So that's coming, but it won't be until about August, September. So have you asked clients, do you have any other super? Mention specifically about CSS pensions or um, yeah, any um, complying pensions they might get on a regular basis, any other Q super or uni super or whatever it may be. Have you asked them that? Because that's really important if you plan on segregating your client base or segmenting your client base. So based on the poll, I'll end that in another 10 seconds. Giving you a little bit to think about there. Five, four, three, two, one. So essentially, based off that, 44% of you don't haven't actually considered what you're going to do yet as far as your reporting. So once again, really need to think about what that's what this means about your whole process. So once again, for us here at Vincent's, we've com we're completely re-engineering our whole process. So we're now uh, undertaken a, um, a process of doing weekly updating of everyone's data feeds. So everyone's fund essentially is as live as what we can get it. Now, that's not everyone. We're only, um, the plan is come, um, the end of July, we'll have 80% of everyone done. So basically every single transaction will be at least looked at by the end of July. So then we can ask questions, do reporting, all that sort of thing. So think about what this means for your business because it is significant to say the least. Whether you look after 10 funds or 50 funds, it will make a difference to how you how you do things and what you do. How will you build clients? How will you recover your time for doing this stuff? All these are questions that you need to think about. Superannuation now is becoming less like a typical tax product that uh, an accountant will offer their services to do. It is becoming something very different. And you know, I'm having those, I suppose, those processes about how we change things about how our model is going to look very differently inside an accounting practice than what it did 12 months ago. So re-engineering a process may be what's required. Certainly, that's what we're doing. Um, is, is it easy? No, definitely not. But is it necessary? I believe it is. So what happens if you lodge something in error? So you've lodged your original T-bar report, all right, that's all good. So you can actually change them, you can modify them. So you can lodge a best guess and come pretty close again and, and re-report. 
So basically you have to cancel the first T-bar report, the, the original one, and then you have to lodge a new report with the corrected information. Now, I haven't seen it operate um, with class yet, obviously, because they've only released their module recently. However, my understanding is that if inside of class, if we were to start a pension, so create that business event, as they call it, start that pension there on certain figures, if we were then to delete out that transaction and redo it, it will automatically create a cancellation and a reissue of our T-bar. So <clears throat> understand what your software is going to do when you need to, and make sure that you actually meet all the requirements. Because think about this, you don't wanna lodge it twice because then you'll get an excess, um, author excess authority notice from the tax office saying, hey, you've got a problem. You then you have to go through and deal with the tax office about, well, actually, no, we actually did that wrong, reported it wrong, and we're going to fix it, and go through all that rigmarole. That's a hassle in life you just don't need. So getting that process right is important. So moving on to the third and final uh, poll question for you to have some, um, have some think thoughts about. I'm sorry. Just try and bring that up. It's nah, sorry, it's just causing me some grief here. It's not. There we go. Sorry. Right. Got there. Um, so, do the new T bar requirements mean that you need to revisit your whole process? All right, this is what I've been talking about. So, Now's the time to start thinking about that. So now you're pretty comfortable with what you do, how you do it, um, and the engagement you have with your clients and making sure that you've got this working. Are you looking to move to cloud software? You know? Are you not using cloud yet? Um, because um, you know, you're using BGL Simple Fund, you've been using that forever and a day, that's all great. Um, are you looking to process on a more regular basis? So in other words, not do it once a year like you know, we typically have in an accounting practice, but actually you know, redesign your process, like I mentioned before, about doing your, um, your processing on a regular basis, be that weekly, monthly, um, even every quarter. But thinking about how you do that, um, that's a really important you know, business process to do. A lot of what we do in super is about change management, essentially. So not only about the dealing with the changes that are put upon us by government and the tax office, but also about the change in which we operate and how we operate, how we communicate with clients, um, the software we use. The, the change that our industry has gone through over the past even five years has been nothing short of revolutionary. And I suppose don't lose sight of how big a deal this has all been too. Um, so I'll keep that open for another 10 seconds while you just give that some more thought. So far, numbers are pretty strong in relation to looking to move to a regular basis um, or even move to cloud software. Remembering too that moving software, it will take you 12 months to get any traction around that. So we moved to class um, super in October 15. And it probably took us a good 12 months to get traction because you have got to transition your funds across, you have to then get data feeds set up so clients have to sign authorities, things like that. Then you've got to basically train the software up. So it takes time and it's a process. So don't expect to flick a switch and there to be the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It won't be like that, I can guarantee you. It's time, energy and effort. And you only get out what you put into it and it's not a, regardless of what any of, the, any of the software providers tell you, it will not be as straightforward as what you think it's going to be. So go in with low expectations and you'll be pleasantly surprised. So anyway, I'll stop that. So yeah, so basically 57% um, are looking to do more regular processing, which is good. So that means that you're more thinking about doing things as they happen rather than waiting to be told, basically. No. 
So along with all of this is some strategies to then think about. So as you're doing the T-bar reporting requirements, don't just ignore the transaction. Take the opportunity to actually assess it, look at it, think about what it actually means. So if you're doing your, your processing on a regular basis, those 57% that are doing it on a regular basis, if that means that you're looking at the transactions, you know what's going on, use that power. Because remember, power, uh, data is power basically in today's world. So if you have excessive pension payments, are you going to treat them as pension, in other words, not do anything? Or are you, are you actually going to take the next step and report a T-bar commutation? Because you could. And then treat them as a lump sum when you do the accounting. That gives the client a debit against their transfer balance account, or cap, and or account, I should say. So it means that if in the future they have more money they want to put into a pension phase, they have that ability to. All right, so once again, Doing the best thing for your client usually means more work for you. Um, what if the market goes south? We have another GFC for argument's sake. Are you looking at their investments as you're doing your regular reporting or doing your processing to say, hey, these investments have gone down. Is there an opportunity here to do a commutation? Because if they previously started a pension on, say, 1.6, it then goes... The, mark, the investments go backwards, so you now have a million dollars, let's say. They, the client still gets the benefit of a 1.5 rollback if you roll the whole thing back, even though there's only a million dollars there. They go into negative, negative, by half a million dollars. So then when you start the pension again on a million dollars, their new cap is only um, six, only a million dollars, not 1.6 million. All right, so that distinct, that thought process is really important around this sort of stuff. Um, timing around when things happen. Once again, an important process. So if your transfer balance cap at the end of, is, re, done, is reported at the end of the day, so your T-bars at the end of the day, is there an opportunity to do a commutation and a commencement of a pension on the same day so there's no excess? So I'm actually got a couple of strategies like that that I'm running with where I'm stopping a pension, starting a new one, um, all because of the, um, the tax-free percentages. So, yeah, once again, think about opportunities that may exist there. Transfers between APRA funds. So if you've got a, a self-managed fund and they want to move money from their pension account inside their self-managed fund and move it over to an APRA fund, you're going to have to report more regularly. You're going to have to do that at, the end, at least by the end of the month. Because otherwise, the APRA fund has an obligation to report end of month. So they're going to say, hey, we've got a new pension sitting over here. You haven't told the tax office that they've moved money from self-managed fund to APRA fund. So they're just going to add the two together and say, hey, there's an excess here. Deal with it. So now you've got more work to do to reverse things and square up the tax office's systems. So once again, make sure that you have your process set up so if someone moves to an APRA fund, you can do that reporting when it happens, so that way it'll save you grief in the long run. At the end of the day, it's what we all want, as much ease as possible. And as I mentioned, right, data is key. Information's power, and the more data you have about a client, the more information, the more helpful you can actually be helping a client navigate all this wonderful new world that we're getting into. And don't, don't be afraid to say this is different, this is hard, who knows what it's going to look like because that's the reality. No one knows what this is going to mean. Hopefully it's going to be a lot easier than what I think it's going to be. But I'm just trying to create amongst essentially my team almost a worst case scenario to make sure that we've covered as many bases as we can to think about as much as we can to try and get it right. And after 12 months, 18 months, this will be just part of a process. So in summary, T-Bar has the potential to be the biggest change to the SMSF industry since GST. The obligation report requirements are very similar. Um, the process of data capture, preparing a report and lodging it are similar, albeit 
it won't be as much. It's only remember you only have to report when events occur. You're not having to do it all the time. It's just when things happen. Um, if you're going to be the one that's doing the reporting, think about how you're going to do that. Consider your client situations. As I mentioned before, if they start a pension on one June, you've you've got to be able to prepare that. So remember, if they start a pension one June today, you've got to report that by 28 July. That's some thought for you, if they have more than a million dollars. Um, and when are you going to do your reporting? Are you just going to do everyone on a quarterly basis? That's what we're doing because we, we started going down the, the segmentation path, but it's too hard. What happens if a client then moves from one segment to another segment? Because remember, once, once you've started, you're locked in. So take over clients. That's a whole other kettle of fish. How are you actually going to know? Well, you've got to remember to ask, what's the reporting obligations? And then the other accountant actually telling you. So if you assume, worst case, qu quarterly reporting for everything, it's going to make life a bit easier. Um, have you considered how you're going to charge your clients for this? Are you going to move away from annual billing? There's a lot of firms that are moving to a quarterly billing cycle now. So think about that. And the last little curly one that seems to be missed by a few people is that the Tax Administration Act actually require, requires clients to sign a declaration whenever a tax agent lodges a return, a report, something like that on behalf of the client electronically. That's what you're doing with T-Bar. You're reporting data to the tax office electronically on behalf of the client. So you may, if, you, if you use class, you may have seen that they've, re, they've recently come out uh, like the last couple of days, or last Friday, I think it was, um, with an electronic lodgement declaration. That was basically because we said you need to have this done. So think about those things that you need to do in relation to um, the administration of actually getting these things lodged. So sending them out to the client and then having them sign it, send it back and, um, and lodging it. So it's not just a simple process. Think about the whole, the whole gamut of what needs to happen, all the steps that are involved. So with that, um, I'll leave it with you. Um, happy to, to chat if you want to run some ideas by me or you know, if you want me to consider your situations or what you're doing and how you're doing it. Um, because yeah, this is all new for everyone. You might have some, you might have thought of something that, that I haven't. Yeah, that's quite possible um, in relation to how this is going to work. So a community-based approach is a good way to go and I'm more than happy to help you know, wherever we can. So whether that's um, on giving you some advice about the, the process around your T-bar or whether it's even helping you actually white label and do the, the processing and prepare the funds for you, um, that's a service that we can offer as well. So with that, thank you for listening. Um, I hope I've given you something to think about, not so much things to, to learn. Uh, but unfortunately, time's running out. So and this is a big deal. So really think about your processes and how you're going to do it and um, good luck with it. And with that, thank you for joining me. Till next time, bye-bye.